from the Hard Rock Hotel in Las Vegas, it's the Cube covering HoshoCon 2018. Brought to you by Hosho. Okay, welcome back. It was the Cube live coverage here in Las Vegas for the first annual Blockchain Security Conference. The brightest minds in the industry coming together. It's called HoshoCon. It's presented by and, and sponsored by Hosho, <laughs> uh, and it's, but it's not their event, it's an industry event. We're here with the co-founder and president, Hartesh Sani, who is the CUBE alumni. Great to see you. You guys are doing a great event. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, it's always, always good to see you, and I'm so glad the CUBE is here at HoshoCon. So you talked with us many times, but recently in Toronto about this event. This is not your company's event. You guys are, are putting it together, you're holding it because there's no other conferences that do this, but it's not just you guys. You guys are bringing the industry brains together. Yeah, I mean, we see ourselves as being on the intersection of cybersecurity and blockchain. And <coughs> it's getting over a cold. But not a lot of conferences are out there that have a open discussion about cybersecurity and the blockchain industry. And hundreds of millions of dollars, millions of dollars are stolen from exchanges, and 10% of all of the money in the ICO space has been lost or stolen, and there's simply not enough platforms for this to be discussed. So we, we figured we'd start the first conference that solely focuses on being a blockchain security conference. Uh, we chose not to have any ICO pitch competition. And it feels like there's more and more typical blockchain conferences out there, but it's important to be home base for anyone who wants to affiliate themselves with cybersecurity and the blockchain industry. And the, and the, and the depth and breadth of security is changing. Uh, we are hearing talks, we unfortunately aren't able to attend the sessions, we're interviewing people all day, uh, but the amazing talks, how to hack a, an exchange, all these new surface areas, I mean, people kind of generally know they're unsecure, but there's growth going on, there's new things happening, this is yeah. exposing some of the security vulnerabilities. What is the hot topics in the talk tracks here at HoshoCon? We have Anand Prakash, who runs a company called AppSecure. He's one of the world's best white hat hackers who has hacked into the likes of LinkedIn, Facebook, Google, all the top names. And to have someone walk us through today, Anand Prakash said, uh, he, uh, here's how you hack into a cryptocurrency exchange, and here's how they actually did it. And to have a white hat hacker walk us through that, and it opens up our eyeballs as to how easy it actually was for a Japanese exchange to lose $500 million. That's no small sum of money, and this industry is only going to survive if we together as a community come together and evaluate how was it that $500 million got stolen and how can we as a community of global lovers of Bitcoin make sure that this does not happen moving forward. Is that on that exchange hack, $500 million in Japan, was that white hat done or, that, or was that black hat? Was it that was done? black hat, right, so unfortunately that's, that, so the they, money's not been given back. So it's not given back, so this, that, that's a half a billion dollars. It's half a billion dollars stolen, yeah, and you know, how, how many industries are worth just about that much? Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> good feed, a couple countries. Um, this is legit, right? Obviously, it's like total, you know, Wild West, if you want to call it, stagecoach robberies. We've got the masks on, no one knows who it is. This is real. This is absolutely real. What are you guys doing as an industry? What's happening here to prevent this? What are the key, you know, hygiene or social, anti-social engineer? What are the key things that are going on that are solving this problem? So. Every exchange needs to value security and get a penetration test. Every company needs to make sure that somebody at their company is in charge of their in-house security practices. Most companies, when you ask them who's in charge of security, they point their finger at the CTO. The CTO is in charge of architecting the software. You need to have somebody full-time in-house taking care of the security, ideally a CISO, and if you can't afford it, pay someone five to $10,000 a month as a consultant to come in for a couple of months and take care of your in-house security. These are basic things. You know, surprisingly, most Bitcoin exchanges, oftentimes when they're hacked, they're hacked by a basic phishing attack. That one of your employees opened up the wrong email. They opened up a PDF and the hacker gained access to your computer and is now monitoring your keyboard strokes and stole millions of dollars. Or the exchange didn't get an actual penetration test of their exchange. Or uh, exchanges are listing contracts that have not gone through a professional smart contract audit. And these things are now also, we're seeing them service in uh, regulation with central governments. Like, and it seems that all the smaller island nations are spearheading the way in terms of writing clarity on regulation. Malta, Bermuda, Gibraltar, all of them are trying to spearhead the way 
I'm much more excited, to be honest, about some of the larger nations bringing clarity on regulation in the next two to three years. We all can't just move to a small island off the coast of Italy that is infamous for actually laundering money in the gaming space. Yes, now they're trying to bring clean clarity, doing KYC and AML uh, in Malta and write actual regulation about uh, security and if you're domiciled in Malta and you're in exchange and you can only list a token that's been audited. It's wonderful, but at the end of the day, Malta is also a part of the EU and if the EU changes their mind, things can change in Malta. I just feel like uh, it shows the immaturity of this space. Yeah. If very legitimate companies are all going to flee to small countries like Malta or to islands like Bermuda, it, good on those island nations for being so pragmatic and forward thinking yeah. and for bringing legal, legal clarity. I mean, if I was in exchange today, arguably, yes, you have to go to Malta if you want clarity on regulation and you don't want to be in the United States. Right now, Malta is your choice. I'm just personally a little bit much more excited about the next three years where I make a joke to my co-founder and I say the suits are coming. That we look around these conferences and you don't see that many suits, but the Fortune 500, many of them are either writing private blockchains, they're evaluating yeah. how they're going to leverage blockchain technology in their major businesses, and they're going to leverage decentralized applications and tokenization for already running products that have millions of customers that are already profitable, and then when they get tokenized, they're going to be up and running right away. And yeah. so uh, the next two to three years are going to be very interesting. From Hosho's perspective, we've taken a big turn towards catering towards more publicly traded, large, sophisticated companies. We've partnered up with Telefonica. Telefonica is a Fortune 200 company. Mm -hmm. And um, it's wonderful to be able to leverage that kind of a brand to deal with major worldwide entities that are publicly traded come to Telefonica and evaluate how they can leverage blockchain technology and get one bundled security package that includes Hosho, Rivets, and Telefonica. Yeah, the Rivet solution is interesting. It's a hardware based solution so the subscriber and the phone becomes the entity. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. I think this, is, this points to new paradigms of security which I want to get to in a second, but I want to just unpack what you said about the small country, big country dynamic. Great for the small countries to be opportunistic to be creative and capture this opportunity, but people want stability, they want clarity on regulations, yes, but also standards, technical standards We can't as well. all just move to the small country of Malta. <laughs> no, I'll be on a plane the whole time. It just doesn't work. Yeah, and, then so, and by the way, the game changes too. So, think, talk, what's the implications of say, Malta decides one day, you know what, we're getting out, we're changing things. A company will have to move their domicile again. So it's a moving train. You don't know what you're going to get. It might be stable now, but it's not a scalable opportunity. Yeah, people, are, people have families and they want to stay where they are. Simple as that. We have large countries that have a strong crypto uh, community that's growing, and let's see how they pan out. Singapore seems like a likely next candidate. You have Korea. I would argue to say that the world's first decentralized application that will be massively adopted will be in Korea. Korea is going to be the place where we have the world's first decentralized application launched with mass adoption, a paradigm shift. The kind of shift where you forgot what it was like before you used Gmail regularly. Yeah, yeah, total, total infrastructure change. All right, so I got to ask you the, 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 the hallway conversation question. I'll see you're very popular here. It's your event, you're sponsoring with the community. Uh, I see you talking to a lot of people at the VIP dinner <laughs> last night. What are some of the hallway conversations that you're having? A lot of interesting people here from diverse backgrounds in security, technology, uh, some policy, some regulatory, some business and legal, but really bright minds. What's the hallway conversation like? What are you talking about? We're talking about how all of us are going to survive crypto winter that we've just entered. We've entered this time where fundraising has become extremely difficult. A lot of funds are simply bleeding, they lost a lot of money, and they're not cutting checks right now. So the companies that are going to survive and stick around through this crypto winter, they're making a strong statement. They're going to be the ones that are going to stick around. And a lot of them are here at this conference at HoshoCon, and it's amazing to have discussions to see what are the problems that fellow founders are facing building companies that will survive this crypto winter. Um, another thing has been, just what are we going to do as a community to self-regulate? Are we going to create self-regulatory organizations? Are we going to let another Moody's get created? Uh, what is our viewpoint on 
regulation in the space overall, right? Uh, we love Max Kaiser. His viewpoint on regulation is very extreme, where he believes Bitcoin is a self-regulatory technology. And uh, on the other hand, we have people saying, no, we need to quickly move to regulate this space, work with central banks, work with central governments, and write out the regulations. Um, that's been a lot of the hallway conversation. And a lot of other ones that, that have been really intriguing to me has been people talking about what are things that they have done within their company to protect their employees. Because the reality is in the cryptocurrency space, every single employee of a major company in this industry is a target by naturally being in this industry. And this includes you. That we are all naturally targets. And it's not about how much Bitcoin you have, maybe it's about how much Bitcoin someone thinks you have. And all of a sudden you become a target. And we have to think about things like our physical security. So some of the more interesting conversations I've been having with people have been around the long lines of what are you doing to protect you and your family in regards to your physical security. On top of that, uh, your, your online presence. So ransoms, people getting you know, kidnapped yeah. and or extorted, these kinds of physical yeah, like Shapeshift pressures. has a lot of great stories. Uh, Michael Perklin from the CIS of Shapeshift is here. You should totally talk to him and get him on the cube. Uh, <laughs> Michael Perklin has a long list of war stories that Shapeshift has been through. Some of them they went through before he was actually hired as a CISO. And Shapeshift would have also not been hacked of millions of dollars if they had brought on a CISO earlier, such as Michael Perklin. I, I believe they had hired him as a consultant, did not renew the contract, got hacked, and then brought him on as CISO. And he was like, if you had continued working with me, I would have, uh, this would have been avoided. And, and that's it's really- just, and, and It's a, foolish. A, a one other thing I've seen with Shapeshift exact, uh, actually is online, you'll notice that all employees of Shapeshift, their last names are not online. So on the website, it says, like, their, their chief marketing officer's name is Emily, it says Emily Shapeshift. And their badges at conferences also say Emily Shapeshift. And uh, these are interesting things to learn from other companies that this is what you're doing to protect your employees from them being hacked. And uh, it's, just, it's very interesting for us to all exchange Shoot, notes. Shoot, I'm out there. <laughs> Your four years everywhere, yeah, pretty much online. Well, I'm out there you as know, well. We just know. gotta protect ourselves yeah. and we gotta think about things like our physical security. Yeah. People feel uncomfortable thinking about their physical security. They think that, oh no, we're in America, we'll just call the cops. Uh, what about when we travel? What about when you and I are in a village in Thailand hanging out? You know, we are microorganisms and when or microorganisms are hungry, they will do whatever it takes to yeah. eat. Yeah. So if they smell abundance, yeah. You and I are in trouble. Yeah, we got to be careful. And this is something that we really got to worry about because there's been tons of war stories. Now ultimately when you get back down to the wallets, one of the things we've been talking a lot this morning on, uh, with Rivets was on, about the notion of how hard it is for mainstream to use tokens. Um, where's my private key? This has always been the crypto problem, even with you know, private key encryption. Yeah. Well, you know, also we built a multi-sig wallet to store your tokens in a, a secure manner. Um, people have been asking us for a long time, crypto funds, ICOs, how do we store our tokens? And our problem was that A, we've either hacked into and uh, the other wallets that are available and we saw that they're insecure, or the UI and UX completely sucks. So we said, let's build our own. And so we built our own. Are you open sourcing that? Is that, is that No, no, we're going to be, this is going to be a unique multi-sig wallet that we release. Um, it's not, um, oh, so you mean, haven't, you... you're open sourcing the the actual code of the uh, of the wallet, or else it's not going to be considered legitimate. Yeah, it's good. Um, but it, it's a profitable venture. It's and, but it's going to be 100 percent bulletproof. <laughs> it's going to be very secure. So talk about Meadow Suite. So we came to a point where our engineers needed better tooling to find security vulnerabilities in smart contracts. And what is available, Truffle, uh, is weak and slow. And so we built. Uh, Meadow Suite, we built a long list of tool tools and uh, a full suite of tooling that we believe are going to be used by a long list of people that are uh, building on the Ethereum blockchain, including a lot of our, develop our competitors. And so we've open sourced it and we're excited for people to check out Meadow Suite. It's uh, on GitHub and our engineers have put a lot of time and effort into it. 
We even have and, our own and logo. And the goal for is to it. automate things, make it easier. What's the main main uh, initial goal? I would say, uh, long story short, is to find security vulnerabilities in smart contracts and to build tooling around that and to effectively build and find vulnerabilities in smart contracts. So they build into their development process natively. Correct. All right, Harchez, great to have you on, and hey, congratulations for putting on this event. Awesome I know we talked here. about it in the past. It actually happened. It's the first inaugural one. Yeah. Um, I mean, we, we had this vision, and I'm glad it came through. Um, we had a great global events team, Gabriel Shepard, and uh, Ryan Shuchuk, and Brad Horspool, and Michelle Yan, and like, they've put on conferences the size of South by Southwest. And our vision is, look, we're not in the events business, and we're a cybersecurity business at the end of the day but we yeah. found it necessary yeah. that there has to be a conference where there's a platform for people to talk about cybersecurity intersecting with the blockchain industry. There's got to be a platform for someone to get on stage and say, hey, here's the lesson that's, lessons that we yeah. learned from getting hacked. Yeah. And uh, you know, if this industry is going to survive, this topic needs to survive, and the brands that want to affiliate themselves with blockchain security and that want to be a part of that discussion, this will be a go-to conference every single year. We're going to keep doing it, and I look forward to having you at every single yeah. one. Coming. It's been great, and you know what's key is having reputable people working together in a community, building an open community, sharing data, sharing best practices, and having yeah. candid conversations. Yeah, it's I mean, the only way to get someone as epic as Andreas Antonopoulos to your conference. I mean, yeah. my co-founder and I have been looking up to Andreas for so long, watching videos of Andreas, watching videos of Max Kaiser, Stacey Herbert. To have them here is really just truly remarkable, and yeah. I'm, I'm grateful, I'm honored, I'm touched. Yeah. I'm touched to have you here. Yeah. I'm, I miss Dave Vellante, I wish he was here. <laughs> He's in San Francisco. He says hi, he was going to fly in tonight. He but texted me. <laughs> he did, okay. Artez, great to see you. Great Congratulations, to see you well. great you. event. Okay, we're here live with the Cube coverage for HoshoCon 2018, the first inaugural security conference on blockchain. Industry leaders coming together, the brilliant, bright minds of the industry, working out the solutions, trying to pedal faster for better security. Uh, check it out, hoshocon.com. I'm John Furrier, stay with us for more coverage after this short break. Thank you.